What the Bowker Creek Blueprint is about is again protecting the environment, understanding that this is a watershed and understand we all can do things to improve it and realizing that any time water comes down, whether it be rainfall off our roofs, car washing, etc., it all ends up in the same place and if we can do things to improve it and improve the way we deal with water runoff and storm water, the world will be a better place not only now but even more so in a hundred years as we will have been at the blueprint for that long. To make the blueprint there were many hours spent uh, as a group um, creating a management plan, creating goals and objectives, um, figuring out why things weren't moving as quickly as we wanted them to move and finally creating the Bowker Creek Blueprint. This was a creek that was in 1920 a lively creek. It had coho salmon coming up here and then we did the usual business of the old way of doing business of not realizing the need for an integrated approach. By that I mean we urbanized and that we covered 60 or 50 percent is blacktop, uh, 60 percent is, is encroached in, in culvert and we now realize that that is not the way to have a healthy system. So what they have done or what has been the strength of the blueprint is they've looked at all these factors, how we've done business, how we should do business and coming in with what we call designing with nature component, meaning doing something about changing back the system where it's covered in concrete and previous areas and green infrastructure, trees and so forth. In other words, bringing it back to its natural state as best possible. I, I think it's um, when it comes to taking a creek that uh, was basically just a drainage facility and be part of a group that is taking it and turning it into a, a pleasant aesthetic feature. It's uh, um, it's, it's kind of nice to be part of the larger facility and uh, I would say it, it means um, we're looking at it more as just a utilitarian feature and we're happy to be part of, a, um, of, of improving something and see something come back to life in a, in a uh, very pleasant format. And if you look at the work that we have planned through the, um, the grant that we're going to be receiving, it's quite exciting to see that that particular facility can be used as a, as, a, as a teaching ground for the high school students. One of the opportunities we have here is we have a creek running through uh, the Oak Bay High School property. Oak Bay High is going to be is going to be a major redevelopment in, in the coming years, and so we've got this opportunity to create a, a site for environmental education, you know, linking linking learning with some of the creek enhancement, with the, creating this community amenity. And uh, so ma many of the challenges uh, that we have in urban watershed management, you know, they're not just restricted to the Victoria area, right? And so, so bringing this opportunity, uh, engaging youth in, into solving problems, into scientific uh, uh, discovery, you know, it's, it's, it's just a, a, it's a really great opportunity again to, to bring youth in and then reach through the youth, reach to the parents and the, and the broader community. Everything we do drains into the creek, so we, it's important to understand that just putting in this rain garden is helpful. What it does, it, it actually helps purify the water immediately before it does go into the drink. And that's just one example of, you know, low impact development. One rain garden isn't going to make a difference, but if you Put, put that out over a hundred years and more and more low impact development, then it absolutely will make a significant development. So, so one of the things that I see happening over, over, over the next 10 years and into the future is that as the broader community takes a greater interest, they become more engaged in the initiative and the blueprint, they begin to take more personal responsibility, whether they're individuals or or businesses for the health of the watershed. It's really a team member thing. I'm proud to be part of the team, absolutely. It's been a great thing. I've been at this engineering a long time. The olden days, we would just pipe water away and not think twice about it. And over time, you know, 
I've been part of a large team that looks moving forward, and this is a perfect example of working with others to improve things long term. What has it done for the local community? It has set a model. This is exactly the model that we like to see that can be uh, copied and adopted in other areas. So the vision of CAVI, uh, and it's progressing pretty well as it is, is getting regional districts to work together, private sector to work together, academia, and why not? Why not take the model we've got at Bowker, using the same principles, but concerning it for the whole of Vancouver Island.